my peeps. Where are the peeps at? Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready for season two's intro? You know, matter of fact, I'm gonna just play it. I'm gonna just play it. I'm gonna just play it. Q was good. Let's roll the fucking intro. Let's go fucking get it. Is the fucking Kendrick show. We're back. We're back. Q was good. We are back from the best show on planet Earth. Where are my people at? Where are my people at? Yeah, I'm not starting the show. I'm oh, going to get up. Uh, we got Q. All right, let me put that in my other pocket. Where's my people at? We're bringing on our guest, Q. It's in the motherfucking house. This is season two. Let's fucking get it. Everyone does not seriously go to hell. Bring on my guy, fucking Q. Q was good. What's going on, my guy? Hey, man, can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes. But hey, just uh, before we get can, before we get can into you the show, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. All right, good, good. Before we get into the show, I need I I, I want to adjust my support base. You guys all can go to hell for not being in this goddamn life. Like seriously, I promoted this shit all damn day. And no one's in this live. I'm extremely disappointed in Team Kendrick right now. Major League is probably one of your people. You guys can seriously like, like, come on, man. All the, everything I do for you guys, no one's in that. No one's in the live, bro. Why is no one here? I'm so probably look, scared of you. Look, oh, though. You think they're scared <laughs> of is, Hold on. It's Monday night. People are just going back to work after being off for the weekend. Oh yeah, you're right. In you're most right. cities, it's cold as hell outside. So people, I'm outside. Really sleep. <laughs> I'm fucking outside, bro. I'm ch- I'm chilling. But uh, hey, fucking, let's get we had enough talking. Let's get, let's get into it. I mean, hopefully, you know, people start to come in during the middle anyway. And I was actually thinking of making the show a morning show. Actually, yeah. What do you think about that? I think a morning show would actually be good. People have not um, better in the morning. Yeah, people haven't whined. Romancy, Romancy, Romancy's my guy. Romancy's in here. That's my, bro, that's, that's my guy, Romancy. Oh, hey, hey. Everyone hey, joining. Hey. You guys are watching season two. I took a whole month off of the show because it was driving me crazy. And, uh, yeah, it was really driving me crazy, like you said, and it being at night. Because after this, I like, I go straight back to my computer. I, I, like, go straight back to what the fuck I was doing. Like, I really don't <laughs> take a break or nothing. It's kind of, like, straight work all day, and then I do this live, and then I go straight back to it. I just got done working out, and, um, it was getting crazy, so I had to take a whole break. Guests were fucking canceling last minute. That shit was really pissing me off. Like, guests well, look, really look. Can't... Let's, let's focus on the positive. The positive is you yeah. made it to season two. Congratulations yeah. on season, season two. two. Yeah, so we want to what, make season two kick off an amazing and listen, show. What a better way to start off season two. No other than my guy, fucking Q Jackson. <laughs> you guys give it up. Give him a clap, an air clap. Drop his fucking uh whatever his fucking uh drop whatever you want in the comments. Cheer for him. He's on the goddamn show. Q, how you feeling, man? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm doing good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I'm doing wonderful. I can't even think about how great I am right now. You know, it feels, it feels really great uh connecting and talking with people and you know, really networking and getting to know each other. So uh, let's get into it, man. So um yeah, absolutely. You're the first guest on season two. That's fucking, that's, that's huge. You know, this is the best show on planet Earth. You, you knew that, you know that, right? I mean, I oh, got come a couple, on, I got a couple come shows on, myself, so. This is way better than I mean, you, you, better than, you can, you can fall in line up under those. So, I mean, yeah, you're in the top like, five. Yeah, it's like, it's like Power and uh, Kendrick show. Like, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. But hey, man, go and for the people that might not know you, um, go ahead and tell everyone you know about, about yourself, who you are, and um, how you started, you know, the Q gentleman shit, and um, we can get into all that. So, how, how'd you how'd you start all this, man? So, as he said, I am Q Jackson. I'm currently living in Atlanta, born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. ATL, oh, yes, I am the founder of um, Quintessential Branding, um, which is a brand development and public relations firm. Um, I am the lifestyle editor of The Quintessential Gentleman. Um, It is a media platform that was created to highlight the stories of Black men by Black men. 
Um, right. So that has taken off and done amazing. You've been um, one of our features Hell yeah. um, over the last, well, this year. Um, but you've been one of our features. So, you know, shout out That's to you for having a story that people wanted to hear. Um, yeah. In addition to those <laughs> hey, Not two. to cut you off, but it was really funny that, you know, some people were like, this guy's only fucking 21. Like, <laughs> that shit, like, really, that shit was like, what the fuck? Like, everyone thinks that I'm, like, 40. But go on, but go on. I appreciate that, though. <laughs> See, you see, because you, you act like you, you know, you, you've been here before. Um, yeah. But in addition to uh, Quintessential Branding and the Quintessential Gentleman, I'm also co-host on Live with Q&T Marie, um, radio platform that's converted to, well, transitioned over to Instagram Live. We've been doing that for about five years. Um, I am also a food blogger um, for Quinn Hunger Strikes, and then I am also one of the founders of the ATL Lunch and Learn panel, which is actually coming back as another name to celebrate the sixth anniversary. So yeah, I got I got a couple things that you know. Yeah, you got a lot going on, bro. Yeah, you know you got to stay busy. Very, it's very respectable, and um, that's Thank one you. of the things. That's one of the things that I, I really like to see, and I think other people like to see too. You know, it's like someone just not doing you know just one fucking thing. Like you have. A lot of stuff going on, and you're really trying to. It's not, and everything's not relatable, right? Like you have like a nonprofit doing this. You're, it's fucking like you're in the radio. Like you're doing like a lot of different things. And you just but get, for you me, know, like, it works though. It works. Yeah, I yeah. can combine everything that I'm doing into one, so it doesn't sound like <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it's yeah, a lot much, of people. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really it's a really hard style to replicate. You know, like you have to be entrepreneur. You have to have. I don't know, you just have to have that different DNA. But let's take it. Let's take it all the way back, man. So how, how did um how did the Q? I'm sorry if I'm messing it up. The Q, the Q, the quintessential. The, I can't even say the word. Quintessential. The, quint the quintessential magazine or the quintessential branding. That was that's the that's the like the 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 company that's over everything else, right? So funny thing, the quintessential gentleman and quintessential branding are not connect. The only connection quintessential branding and the quintessential gentleman is me. Quintessential branding oh, is something you. that I started um, about ten years ago because I had a lot of people. Yeah, I want to. I want to um, get into that. How did How did that start? Yeah, I had a lot of people coming to me, friends, family, things like that, um, because I had been in the industry, um, working with another media platform um, around like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. So through that, I had the opportunity to meet a lot of people. Um, you know, I had a lot of different connections and my knowledge about a lot of different things started to increase so what ended up happening was a lot of people were coming to me asking me different things related to their brands and i'm like well fuck y'all <laughs> if you're asking me this like people are getting paid to tell people what to do with their brands and i yeah. researched a little more i actually talked to a few people who were doing um public relations in the city of atlanta and they just kind of talked me through a lot of different things um, shout out to them for actually opening up and, you know, being willing to share, um, you know, their knowledge with me. I definitely yeah. appreciate that. Um, so for that you know, clarification, this, this is in 2008, 2009. Well, 2010 when I actually launched Quintessential Branding. Um, so, yeah. That's like right when that. social media and like, that's like when the world, the digital world was like going through a complete shift and a lot of things were changing as far as like, going from traditional, I guess, out of house advertising and traditional, you know, T V and stuff. It was really going mm -hmm. mobile. It was really going, you know, digital. And it was it's really a lot of people really capitalized off of that transition. So I'm I'm assuming that you were you were one of those people. Absolutely. I was there when Twitter was the the main thing. Yeah. You know, Facebook was cool but it had gotten old and by this time everybody was able to get on it. So your parents were on there, your grandparents were on there. Um, so people started to transition over to Twitter. And Twitter was a thing that became very popular when I started getting into the industry. Then Instagram came and so on and so forth. Um, but about five years after I started Quintessential Branding, um, I was still working with the other media publication, B Magazine. Shout out to B Magazine. We did some amazing um, things for the seven years that I was with them. Um, but it was a lot going on in the world with police brutality, black men getting killed. You know, everything that the news was showing about us was not the truth. It wasn't our story coming from us. 
So my best friend who had by that time moved to New York called me and was like, Q, we need to do something about what's going on in the world. He, <laughs> this man already had a plan. He just pretty much hey. came to me to say, look, who, who I need is, to who be is, a part of this. Um, who? My For Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas, shout out to Eric K. Thomas, the founder <laughs> I was like, I was of... Like, Eric Thomas. I'm like, like, yeah, like because be, it's like, a, be a like, motivational... Like, be Eric, it's, like, it's, well, be Eric Thomas? Like, be what? Eric Thomas. He is the Eric Thomas for a lot of us. Because, yeah. you know, somebody with a vision like, like that... Hold, he, hold the fuck on now. <laughs> no, Eric K. Thomas. But gotcha. he had a vision... Um, to highlight black men and you know that's where the quintessential gentleman came from and for the last almost five years it's been an amazing journey you know we've had the opportunity to cover quite a few great people in the magazine and on the cover of the magazine and it's just like over these last four years people has have looked to the quintessential gentleman to be that voice for our community like black men are being represented finally in a way that we all can be proud of and you know yeah. i'm not like bragging on what we're doing but like the quintessential gentleman yeah. has I mean, done good. that yeah. and people look forward to that so you know our culture issue just released with um king batch on the cover yeah i've seen that shit. Um, that shit was fucking crazy so in addition to the cover being amazing, the stories in there are amazing. And they all were inspired by what's going on with this um, racial injustice and the voting and everything that we need to know to make it out of this year and make us better people. It's in that magazine. So if you guys get the opportunity, go check it out. www.theqgentleman.com And you might not uh, I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna put it down just for the, just for the people. Hey, everybody that's tuned in. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you for everyone. Amazing that's, um, Monday. It's tuning in, listening. So, uh, yeah, that's a that's a really great story. And um, it's it's always it's always the people that that take what's going on in the real world, and then they have that kind of like that meeting, like, okay, what can we do right now that's contextual to what's actually going on. And a lot of yeah. people, they, they when they start things, it has like no meaning behind it. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily what anyone wants or what anyone needs. So it's really interesting that you guys, at that time, 2015, I don't what the hell. I was like, what? I was like, I was fucking too young to even know what that was going on back then. But back then, when all that stuff was going on, it's really cool that you guys seen that and you paid attention to it and you kind of formed a brand around that. And that was able to excel and I was able to actually you know, do something to to contribute towards, you know, all that stuff that's going on. Cause a lot of people, they want to, uh, they like, they probably go live or they probably go out in the street somewhere and hold up a sign. But it's like, right. you guys came together, you guys came together and made a concrete actual thing and actually turned it into something. And that's really remarkable. I appreciate that. And you know what? Honestly, when everything was going on this year and people were out there protesting and all of this other stuff, like I was battling within myself because I'm like, Cute. Do you get out there and you know go <laughs> expose yourself to the different things that could be going on? Because of course during that time, Corona was acting crazy. Police was yeah. busting people upside the head. But what I realized, and I'm thankful for the people that made me or helped me to realize it, I created a platform um, with quintessential period. Um, yeah. And with that, you know, being a part of the quintessential gentleman and the radio show and everything else that I've been doing, why not use my platforms, use my voice via my platforms and protest and be a part of what's going on that way. So doing things like that is what kept me motivating other people as well as myself throughout this, right. you know, entire time. Like, if you guys yeah. check my page, if you guys check the Quintessential Gentleman, we've had the opportunity to interview some amazing people throughout this time who've shared some very inspirational things. And, you know, now that's footage that we have that has helped to grow us to where we are right now today and helped other people to have a voice, you know. So 
thankful for yeah. things like that. It's, it's the people that that make the the platform. Like those, like those are the people that can create the community that can encapsulate the people that that right. need to benefit from it. It's like so many people want to be like the like you're not. I'm just saying hi to some people in here. You have to create the platform. You have to create the environment for people to enter. So it's kind of like when I started on my label, it's like, it's not for me. Because, you know, there's like, you know, like, if you know anything about, yeah, you're, you're in the same industry as me. It's like, at first I was like Diddy, right? Like I was like, in front, I, I, I was like in front of the artist. It's not supposed to be like that. Like you're kind of, you have to create that platform and that you have to create that environment for people to join, for people to, for people to want to be a part of it. Like, like you see what I'm saying? Like it's all it's all about creating a platform, creating a, a base for people. Like that that's what it should be about. Like not, and so, I think so many so many people right now are trying to be like the like the intent behind what they do. And it's like you're building a platform. It's not like about it's not about you. Like you see what I'm saying? Right. And I see so many people like they're they're making their business, they're making their thing. It's like they say it's about uplifting you know black people and they say it's about bringing people together but it's really just like a, a fat ass facade for them like just a like a like a self pr system for themselves that's how what so? i typically see how so because here, here's the thing you know like so they're intent and you do the complete opposite of this like i see you from what you're doing like you, you are you're doing this for the people like you're the behind the type of scenes type of guy and i see a lot of people like a lot of a and r's a lot of music executives that, like these people are behind the scenes like their job is to get other people out, and they and they insinuate little little things on on Twitter, and they post little things, and it's always like, oh yeah, I did that, or I was a part of this, or they'll post something, and it's like, oh yeah, we did that, or it's like, I I, I can't I can't really pinpoint like specifically, but just the overall tone of some people, their intent doesn't match, you know what they what they claim they're trying to do, and we need more people like you that are in this to actually do the actual thing and not like just to promote, you know, Q. But that, that, that's why I see. Tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, I, I definitely can understand where you're going. Um, when people, I feel that when people create different platforms, yes, they create it with a vision and a goal in mind, but truthfully, they start with what they can get out of it. Whether it's yeah. promoting themselves to make themselves bigger than who they are, um, whether it's using themselves as the vessel for other people to tell their stories. You know, it's, it's many different ways that you can look at it, but it's about, you know, truthfully at the end of the day, what are the people saying? What are, you know, the yeah. people getting from what it is you're doing? So just like you, I wanted to ask, like, what was that thing that made you start this? Like, what made you want to create this platform? Oh, damn. <laughs> Damn, you asked that. That's like the golden question. Um, that's a long ass story. Like, I I, I want to get into it, but it's, it's a long ass story, bro. And you know, this is this is I want this to be your time. Like, I, I hey, I'm sticking to my word, right? I want this to be I want this to be about the guests. I want this to be about yeah. the people. So I answer it very shortly. My life was completely terrible a couple of years ago, in 2017. It's crazy. 2017, I couldn't speak in a complete sentence. I was illiterate. I was illiterate. I couldn't speak in a complete sentence at all. And I had a life changing moment with my friend and um I just something snapped in my head and I got rid of that old life and I came back and um yeah, I started it's like I can't even rush it. It doesn't even feel right. <laughs> it doesn't feel right to rush it. It's, it's a really long what's your what's uh your elevator pitch? Wow, glory to God. Yeah, man, it was a it was a really life changing revelation moment. But where I was going with that is since you have this platform for people and you know you're telling other people's stories i'm uh, kind of, i want to know i want to know your story so let, let's take it back like how did you how did you start to even want to give people a platform how did you even start to want to turn into this or did you even, did you see like you yourself becoming this like when you were like or maybe you were like me you were like a fucking nut job like yes yeah, let's say let's hear about that oh no i wasn't no fucking nut job but i felt like i would be sitting <laughs> at somebody yeah. else's job for the rest of my life. That's what I initially yeah. thought. Then I'm like, okay, I gotta move to Atlanta because there was nothing in Cleveland so, so for where, me. So I'm where like, were you? Okay, Cleveland. Cleveland. That's cool. Yeah. So I'm like, I needed to be in a place where Bye, I could friend. grow. 
but you know i had family down here so i'm like okay cool so i came down here um went to school but i had friends who were in the um in the entertainment industry so yeah. through that they started to bring me around different things they were doing and i'm like well oh, shit you know well, i kind of like being around what people. uh what time what time frame are we are we in right now Ooh, God, 2008 around. so that was yeah. like years I was ago like, oh, i moved I was down like, here I was like six. yeah I moved down here in 2007, um, but this around 2008, 2009 is when I started to enter the entertainment industry, and I started to meet a lot of people that, um, you know, I actually enjoyed. And so, so, you know, so what made you move? What made you move from from Cleveland? There was nothing there. I was in Cleveland. I was like, what at did the you time like 19 years old. In Cleveland, I felt like there was so much I wanted to do in life, but I did not know what it was. And I didn't feel like Cleveland was the place for me to discover what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be. So I saw how thriving Atlanta was. And I had an uncle yeah. and family who lived down here, as we all do. We all have family in Atlanta. So he was like, if you come down, you know, I'll let you stay with me for, <laughs> for 30 days. You know, you, days, you, gotta you move out and do what you got to do. Um, and and I did not take that. Down. Huh? So you'd be crazy to not take that. To not take that oh, yeah. That, yeah, um, absolutely. That but, you know, I had to do what I had to do. Got a job, apartment, school, and things like that. So fast forward, and like I said, I started going around the entertainment industry. And people were always asking, well, what do you do? And what do you do? And I'm just like, well, I just came with so-and-so. And I didn't want to be that anymore. So I started saying, oh, well, I, I plan events because I actually worked with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland when I was there um, for some of their programs. And I actually helped to plan events. So that's where I started going with everything. So through that, I got different opportunities to help people plan events and to do this and do that. And then fast forward to 2009, I got the opportunity um, to be a writer with the magazine then I became the event planner. Then I became the editor. Then I became the, you know, I had a lot of different responsibilities within that magazine. And it allowed me to grow right. as an individual. Um, but it so, also showed me, you know, what so, I was capable with, of doing. Within, within this um, time period, when you were getting all these opportunities, like how were you, were you going to like networking events? Were you like, were you putting stuff on like Facebook? Like, how, uh, how are you getting the name out there? that you no know, you were Q and you no know, you did events and you were like you were someone that wanted to be a part like how were you getting like yourself out there? So during that time, like I said, that's when Facebook was really popular. Um Twitter yeah. had become popular and eventually Instagram started to become popular. So, you know, my little flip phone, I'm trying to take pictures <laughs> Post them on social media. Like I look back today and I'm like, damn, this picture quality was shit. But it it worked. You know, people were looking at me like, well, damn, this guy comes from the same place I'm from. And how is he in the place with these celebrities? You know, so people wanted to know who I was and know what I was doing. And from that, more people started to follow, more started to follow, more started to follow. Um, and then through that, different opportunities started to follow. Networking via social media became a major thing. Um, but right. the way I started, of course, was through events. It was so many events. Um, oh, shout out to uh, Yadina. <laughs> She's one of the um, people that I met during the first however many months or years or whatever I was in the industry. I've met right, some amazing people um, yeah, I believe that are in the industry that are still in Atlanta, some that have moved on to different cities and states and countries and things like that. So, you know, overall, I, I would definitely say this journey has been a blessed one for me to, like, have been able to experience the things that I've experienced, you know, and then have the opportunity to create platforms for other people to experience some of the things that I've experienced. Like, it's an amazing thing. Right. And, you you know, you, you made a great – Maya, what's up? You made a great point. And I, I asked you that question because I wanted to get to that. You know, the importance of networking, the importance of, you know, getting yourself out there. Like, a lot of people, like, you, 
you made the first step. You know, like you, you yes. understood that you were in this place, Cleveland. Never been to Cleveland. It's better than where I am at right now. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you're in this place that sucked. So you, you made that first step. You got out of the city, right? But now, hold up. Hold yeah, hold you, hold you weren't, you weren't done up. yet. Hold up. I will say this. Let me clarify this. I did not say Cleveland sucked. I love my hometown, but it just <laughs> oh, didn't yeah, have, yeah. It yeah. did not have what I needed at the time to grow. Right. But well, it, it sucked for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it, it, Oh, that's it. Just, I thought it was yeah. I thought that was, I, thought, I just thought that was too. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so you made that first step, but you, but you yes. weren't done there, right? You, once you got to Atlanta, you know, you had to get out there and you had to get your face out in the crowd and you had to mingle and you had to network. You had to put, you put out content and, you know, people started to see it. And they see mm. they they trusted you and they believed in what you they believed in what you what you had, and um so so I want I want to I want to dissect that you know how important how important is it how important is networking and I can't even believe I'm asking that question because you know obviously to people like you and I it's like well if you don't network nothing happens but some people believe it or not they don't understand it so let's talk about it was scary as heck when I started networking two years ago I read this book called a book of small talk tidbits of that book connected to yeah I'm really bad at small talk too myself. Actually, if you believe it or not, but by my, I totally understand. Um, but let's get into it. How that, important uh, is networking? Oh, that real quick, Maya. We just read a comment. DM me that book link. I want to. Um, I want to check that out. Um, networking is very important. Um, super. But that's a super. So I, I, I oh, give that link. Yes, yeah. Um, because the way that you allow yourself to grow is by the people who know you. Um, there was years ago, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. No, yeah. I personally believe oh, no. it's, it's the who knows you part. It's not what you know, it's not who you know, but it's who knows you. Because you've gotten out here, you've managed Never to get a name for yourself um, and a reputation that was respectable enough for people to pass the word of who you are on to other people. And for me, that's what it was. Oh, you need a guy that does branding and PR, or you need somebody to interview your clients for a magazine or for a show, or you need somebody to help you with an event or this or that. I was creating different avenues where people could, you know, use and benefit from the knowledge that I had. And to this day, you know, they still do, you know, so networking is very important, but what's more important than networking is creating an image and a reputation that not only people can respect you from, but that you can be proud of at the end of the day. Because it's so many people out here in the industry who get to a place where they feel like they've made it and they start shitting on people, they start doing things that are less than admirable, and then they burn bridges to the point where nobody wants to work with them. Me, I can thankfully say over the last 12 years, 96 Seven percent of the people that I've encountered over the years, I have positive rapport with. I can go back and it could be five, ten years later and we can still pick up like um, like nothing happened. Like I have a client who I worked with for about two or three years through quintessential branding. Um, and, you know, some things in life happened and, you know, we parted ways, but we always remained okay. And because of the work and the foundation that we laid years ago, four years later, you want to work again. You know, so I'm thankful for things like that. One thing that I never had to do really with quintessential branding was push myself because each and every client that I've been fortunate enough to have over the years has yeah, always yeah. had a friend, a colleague, a family member, or something of the, the sort. The word of, the word of mouth help. is the branding for you. Exactly. So that's how the majority of my clients over the past 10 years came to me, through somebody else. I didn't even have a website for years. I didn't feel like good. I needed one. But I did it for them, you know, and not myself. I had to make myself look professional. Yeah. Um, and it had to go along with the brand. How can I tell somebody else what to do to make their brand look good and how to create a brand if I'm not, Christian, what's up? you know, following the same thing. So, you know, I'm thankful. So, 
to, to wrap to wrap that up, you you were providing people value, and it spoke for itself. And there I'm you so, go. I'm so, like there I'm you so go. glad I'm so glad you went there because it's like, and, and you said something else smart about you said that I, you didn't have to brand yourself. That's the thing. You don't like once you get to a point, and obviously, you, you, but you you can't get to that point until you put in the work and you actually right. fucking deliver, like and actually give an actual quality thing. Everyone mm-hmm. is obsessed with this. Is what this is what I was talking about like 15 minutes ago. Like this being like this big PR thing. Like oh, look at me, I got I got a fucking media company. Look at me, I got a record label. But it's like, but what what you deliver is shit. <laughs> and what the thing the thing is with it yeah. is once you can actually deliver and once you actually provide people value, you guys could literally be in a fight and rip off each other's limbs. And just like you said, in ten years, that fucking bond is still there. And that's like I can't even um, I can't even like express how important that is to be able to know at any moment that you can that you have that you have like ten people. I don't even know. Like you have like at least. 15 people that you can just like pick up and be like, hey, yo, like, I need this. Like, that's just, that's just mind boggling to me. Right. It's mind boggling. But, See, no, but you know, at, at your age, it is because, you know, maybe you don't have the years of experience like I have, but give yourself a couple years with the platform that you create for yourself and the reputation that you will continue to build. It'll become something that's natural. And you'll. Yeah you won't even remember the place when you didn't even understand how you got to where you are. So just keep growing and keep oh, yeah. believing in yourself. And that's for you and that's for everybody that's out there um, watching because you're track hard work without you thinned. believing in yourself, I mean, why would I want to believe in you if you don't even believe in yourself? <laughs> hey, man, you're, you're, fight, you're, you're just dropping, you're just dropping too much gems. Those are called that's that's called quinspiration. It's my version. Quinspiration. Of quinspiration. <laughs> quinspiration. Yes. Jesus, man. So you guys just featured. You guys had a really big feature. You guys had King Batch. I want to know yes. one thing. How the fuck did you get in contact with this dude? And, and how, like, did, how, how, how did that happen? How, 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 how did we get in contact with him, or how did his people get in contact with us? Okay, so how how did they how did they see you guys? Let's see so the first here. of all. First of all, we have an amazing team. Our PR, our writers, our entire staff for the quintessential gentleman is truly amazing. And when you create a product that, like I said, you can be proud of, but that other people see and can be proud of, they want the opportunity to share their story on your platform. And that's what happened with everything. Like King Batch is like Came back is not like a he's not like a like a, a micro influencer like this dude is like this dude is like fucking huge. So yes. When I seen that, I was like, holy shit! Like, damn! Like, like these like these people are really you have to really be fucking doing something for someone that big to want to be on something. You know, I'm not saying I'm not trying to belittle what you have, but it's like if you really if you take him and you take hit like like he's giving you guys clout doing that. So yeah. it has to be a real value exchange. So that that's See, kind of what I wanted to get to. And, and and it is um, a value exchange. I like the way you put that. It is because, yes. like I said, we've created a platform that people can be proud of, and you know them coming to us. You guys see him as the comedian. You guys see him as the guy with however many millions of followers. But when we were with him at that photo shoot, when he sat there and had that conversation. Um, throughout the interview, he showed us a different side that other people don't get to see. And if you read, when you guys read the interview on www.thequeuegentleman.com, <laughs> you'll get yeah, the opportunity to see, you know, the parts of him that we got to see during that time. You know, people want the opportunity to show themselves as more than that public image. Before they were that public image, they were a person with a journey, with hardships, with a story. And that's what we've had the opportunity to capture over those years is the genuineness and the truth. Like, I can't tell you the amount of people that we've interviewed, had covers for um, over the years who, 
you see them on TV or whatever platform and they're this person. But when you get them like in that, that different place, there's something completely different. And, you know, I'm thankful to have had the opportunity yeah. to meet the real person behind well, that. Has that this like, media. When, you say, when, you, when you say different person, has that been like a good way, like a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, in, in a, in a good way. Um, everybody we've interviewed, like, it, it's just like a, a piece of realness. Although we're excited to interview them, they're just yeah. as excited to be there with us. You know, so it, it allows yeah. us to see them as, like I said, more than just that image that the media puts out there or that social media puts out there or their movies put out there. We get to see them as the actual person and you know a lot of people don't get to see that so you know this has been an amazing thing and king batch is is no different he andrew bachelor from canada you know he's he's a real cool guy and the the shoot was great the interview was great so once again make sure you guys go check that out www.com <laughs> yeah man that's that's really fucking that's really I got some cussing, man. That's really, that's really no, interesting. You see, that, you I know, don't think you, are... you do. <laughs> that's a part of your brand. That's what I know. Yeah, is yeah, I... It is. yeah. You're right. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys this. I emailed this man some questions. I emailed him questions. His response <laughs> to those questions had cuss words. How can you respond really in written form and say, fuck? And it, like, uh, I couldn't believe it. It was funny. It really did. I, I had to it really do a did. lot of work to make it, you know, but that's who it really you did. are. That's, people have respected that. you for that, and people have come to know you for that guy, as that guy. Right. That but, listen, but, listen, but, but listen, though, and, like, because, like, I don't, t people tell me the same exact thing. I swear to God, it's not, like, a, it's not, like, a, I'm not, it's not on purpose. Like, I swear to God, I'm not doing it on purpose. It's just how I fucking... This is how I there talk. You go. Like it just there it just com it comes out, and I've been told that oh it means that oh you like oh uh, a real man can express himself without cursing. I'm like what? Like I I, I I and I've heard hey because the opposite of that I've heard that cursing is a is a sign of intelligence. So I don't know who's right. I don't know who's wrong. But well, I don't really care because this is how I talk, and it's really 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 important to be yourself. And that's a re that's a really good segue. The goal how, is how, to express yourself. And if that's the right. way that you can express yourself and the people that have supported you, if they understand what you're trying to express, that's all that matters. The people that are out there hating on you, do not let those people sway you. If you want to throw out a fuck, if you want to throw out a shit, throw it out. Man. This throw is your out. platform that you created. So do what you have to do for you. Right. So I want to ask you the same exact thing. You know, mm -hmm. So moving from that small city, from the whole entire journey you've been on, how well, it ain't small, been... but I got you. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but moving from that, from well, compared to Atlanta, I mean, it's kind of yeah. like a, a difference, right? Yeah. So moving from city to city, going doing doing all these networking things, you know, building your brand. How important has it been being a hundred percent authentic? And I want to ask you a second question: Who have you seen that has gotten to a certain point, and then they start acting, you know? doing that Hollywood thing, and then they just fucking plummeted. Like, I want to know about that. Like, how important has so, being 100% been? I'm, I'm gonna, like, who, who have you seen fail from not doing that? I'm going to go with the second question first. I've personally witnessed a lot of people fail from trying <laughs> yeah, to be something. From, try, from trying to be something that they were not. And for them, it wasn't a... If they took that right, that experience right, it wasn't a thing of them failing. It was another lesson that they needed to learn to get yeah. them to the place that they need to be. Sometimes you got to fall in order to be able to stand up and, and walk in who you really are. Um, so now what was the first question? Because that second question, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I would that's never a, that's, tell that's, the exact yeah. people who I saw. That's an, that's an important point because, you know, for a lot of people, the failure, I, I like to say failure is success and success is failure. Like, so mm -hmm. it all depends how you look at it. And sometimes you have to, you know, fall on your ass to be able to get up and, you know, walk by yourself. That's important. Yeah, That's an important point you made. But the first question was, 
how important is being yourself? How has that played a part in your whole entire success? Like, when have you felt like you were, have you ever felt, sorry, I'm asking like a, a ton of questions at once. Have you ever felt, or did you ever feel like you were getting to a point where you weren't being yourself, like around some yes. people? Because I know that this industry is like, some people can act fucking weird. So let's hear about that. So being in an industry for a number of years, being new to the industry, being somewhat of a veteran in the industry, um, but yeah, you go through different phases where you're trying to fit in. So if you're trying to fit in, then oftentimes you're trying to adjust to the situation and you're changing things about yourself so that you can fit in. I've had those right. moments. Um, I've had those moments oh, based on where I was and who I was around. I questioned things about myself. Um, but after realizing who I was and what made me comfortable and realizing what attracted people to me, I started to have more confidence in who I was. And it yeah. wasn't about what other people thought of me because if you feel however you feel and it may be something negative, you don't have to deal with me. You don't have to speak to me. However, you will respect me as I'll respect you. Um, but being authentic has been a journey because I wasn't always true to who I was. And it was through trying to be somebody else and, and having those moments that may be considered failures or lessons that I really discovered who I was, what I loved, what made me comfortable and what made people love me. And I woke up one day and I just said, well, damn, all this time I've been trying to appeal to other people when the person yeah. that I should have been trying to make happy and appeal to was the person that I get up and look at when I'm looking in the mirror every day. Because if none of these people um, existed, I still have to be happy with who I am. If I pack up and move to a completely different country, the only common thing between me and the new people that I meet is me. So if I'm not secure and comfortable within myself, um, then why would people want to be around me? Why would people flock to some bullshit if, you know, it, it's not something that's genuine and authentic and leaves a lasting impression? So yeah. being authentically you is an important thing, and it's not an easy thing. A lot of people don't get there um, overnight. You know, it's a process. It's a lot of tears. It's a lot of stress. But when you get there, oh, buddy, when you get there, it is an amazing thing, and that is a feeling that you hold on to. I, you know, I totally agree with that. <clears throat> and I, I agree with you. You know, at some point, I feel like if I look at my whole 22 years of living, I think I was – always myself i never really cared about what people thought but mm -hmm. i'd be i'd be lying if i ever said that oh i never i i never tried i never tried to fit in or i never tried to act you know a certain way you know we all we all do that like we're all human like we all tend to do that sometimes but the thing is is you know how aware we are why we're doing that and how we come back from that like kind of like how you said and i think a lot a, a reason why a lot of people you know they'll act or they'll put on this like persona on the internet or when they get out and they'll, they'll act this way for these people and they'll act this way for these other people it's because they don't know who the hell they are. Yeah. So they can't and they can't be authentic. Mm-hmm. I absolutely agree with that. You hit that Mike right drop. in the head. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, can't, they, they can't be authentic. So yeah. they're like a they're like a chameleon. Like if they're around people that are, you know, sniffing coke, you know, that's their life. If they're around people that are, you know, doing this crazy thing, they're doing that. Or if they're with these people that are talking down on people and gossiping, they're talking down on people and gossiping. They can't, they can't be themselves because they don't even know who they are. And exactly. that's just really, really, really important that you know who you are before you try to go and like join a tribe or go like networking. Like it's just you're gonna get down a, a really bad hole if you don't know a hundred percent of who yourself or who you are. Yes. Super, super, super important, man. So let's uh, let's, let's talk about let's talk about you know the brand. 
what, um, besides the big uh, feature you guys had, what's some what's some things you guys have planned for twenty twenty one? Like, um, how how are we gonna go into this next year? So, um, as far as the quintessential gentleman, the team is always working to grow. Um, the team is always working to find those people who have the the stories that we need to hear, that you need to hear, um, that can help inspire a generation, that can influence and encourage and all those other things. So we're working on our other cover. Um, we are working on, you know, just more interviews of more great people. Um, per On a personal level, quintessential branding is still, um, I still have clients that I am assisting with building and growing their brands and things like that. And then, as I said, the ATL Lunch and Learn, which is a networking panel that I've had for the last, it'll be six years and two weeks. Lunch, lunch and Learn? Yeah, the ATL Lunch and Learn. I've had that um, panel um, for, like I said, it'll be six years and two weeks. I'm rebranding that, and it's about to be amazing. Um, so look out for the BLK Lunch and Learn coming BLK soon. Okay, Lunch and Learn. Got yes, you. it's no longer ATL. It's going to be the BLK Lunch and Learn because what I personally realized is throughout the course of the Lunch and Learn, we've had the opportunity to share so many stories from great Black people throughout the community. So yes, the BLK for most people, it's Black, but it's about stories of self-awareness, stories of value, stories that people can, you know, be inspired and encouraged by. And we've done it for six years and got we going to keep on doing it. So look out for that. Um, if you guys are familiar with the show P-Valley, um, I have Nico Anon, which he played Uncle Clifford on P-Valley. I have Tawanda Braxton of, you know, the legendary know Braxton is. family. Um, I have uh, Eric K. Thomas, actually, the best Thomas. <laughs> who's also the founder of the Quintessential Gentleman. Hey, you got uh, you got uh, someone who wants to help. I got you. That's, that's, that's my homeboy chosen. I already know. We will oh, talk I thought, later. I thought, <laughs> I, thought that was a random, I thought that was a random person because I was going to say, hey, look, look what happens when you, you're being yourself and you're giving value. Like, people want to people fucking help you. Like, I was going to say that, but. Absolutely. But it, so. Real quick, but still, I have point um, showed up Shaquita Garcia, who is also a best friend who I've had since we were 15 years old in Cleveland. She launched a media platform for mothers, um, the Modern Housewives. So definitely check her out. Then my co-host and best friend and other friend, T. Marie, who I do the show with, she is an author and a relationship advocate. She has a lot of things going on. And then my friend, Sean James, who is a publicist um, here in the city who does some amazing things. So everybody with a story to tell and a journey to be inspired by. So that will be coming to you yeah. guys November 14th. Um, www.blklunchandlearn.info And you also can follow it on Instagram at blklunchandlearn. Let me put that in the comments. Oh, I was, you beat me to it. I'm going to do it for you. Oh, um, well, I appreciate. I know, it. I know. I know a lot of publishers in the in the game. Why? Why is that so popular? I know a lot of like a lot of <laughs> a lot of publishers because people are out here creating brands daily. Yeah. Um. Yeah. People are out here needing help, guidance, and direction on a daily basis. There may be a hundred great publicists in the world, but there may be a million people with a business idea and those hundred publicists can't deal with all yeah. one yeah. million of those people. So there are new publicists being groomed every day. Everybody understands their good. role in life. You know, some people may be good behind the scenes. That's where their power is. Some people may be good in front of the scenes. That's where, you know, that's why it's, it's a lot of publicists out here. Because there are a lot of people yeah. that need to and want to be clients. So shout out to yeah, all the like, publicists out there. Because I run a, a small marketing firm. You probably know. The Media I'm Group. sorry. And no, say that again. You run a what? 
That's not a small marketing um, agency. Nope. Social Take media. Take that word out. Sorry? Take the word out. Don't use small. Take <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Got you. It's another. It's another quinta, quinta inspiration. Quinta uh, give, give, uh, yourself, <laughs> give yourself. Give yourself the power a, that you I run deserve. A, I run a global a marketing agency, Vivo Media Group. Uh, that's gonna be crazy to say that one day. That's gonna be really fucking crazy to say that. I run a global agency, uh, Vivo Media Group, and <clears throat> one of the things is, it's like I think like a publicist is more like a a one person, to one person, like. I'm helping you put this out, and with a uh, like a uh, when you put like an agency model, it's kind of like a, a more like a business to business aspect. So I guess I guess people that go into the publicist game, I guess they kind of like that one on one, like I guess interaction more. Mm -hmm. I guess because I I'm always think like why don't they just make why don't they just create you know a team like a like a, like a, a agency, and when they can they can service bigger people. And you know, do you know like bigger things? But it's like I guess they like to go with that because I hate helping. I don't. I'm not gonna say I hate helping, but I I, I don't like helping like solopreneurs with like their thing or what they have going on. Like you know, I know, I know it's really like it's really opposite to what <laughs> like what I say and what I'm doing. But and I don't the know. funny thing, you say that that you prefer the the bigger the you know the bigger client the business. Yeah aspect of the client where i prefer that solo entrepreneur because i was once that person who didn't know what i wanted to do or where i wanted to go or the direction that i needed to go in so if yeah. i have gotten myself out of that situation or i'm clear on where i want to be if i can be that person that can direct and guide that other person who was once in the same situation then yeah. i'll do it the majority of my clients hey, I, yeah. have been those people I, I I totally get that. I totally understand. Donovan was good, but <clears throat> here's the thing: I try to I try to stay away from that because you and I both know, <clears throat> you know, the, the whole business coach thing like that. That market is egregious. Like that market is terrible. Like for people that are like, you know, and <clears throat> that's the thing. It, it's crazy. Like, like you, I, I would consider you and I friends, right? I mean, we're digital friends we never really met each other yeah. but yeah friends right it's like i'm the worst person trust me i'm not negative i'm not a negative person at all but i'm like the worst person to come to when you have like a, a an idea like don't tell me your fucking idea like i don't care like some people are like, oh like, so my, like my friend today like he was dming me like crazy this morning he's trying to start a clothes like a t-shirt brand and he's like oh i need names i'm trying to think of a name like i don't give a fuck about your damn name like i don't care like like get like get that like i don't care about that I, I, and I, I, and the I thing is, a lot of people they, they monetize. Yours, I hope that yeah. this friend of yours is watching now. Look, if you need no, help no, with not. your brand, make sure you hit quintessential branding because that is what we <laughs> here's, do. <laughs> here's the thing: a lot of people they they not saying you do this, but they feed on people that that have no shot. Like they have no shot at, at getting this fucking t-shirt brand off the ground. But they, but they'll take on that client and charge them just for you know just. To, to help them, but they have, but that person has literally no shot, and I don't like facilitating that kind of behavior because I don't think everyone can be an entrepreneur at all. I don't think everyone can have a business. I don't think that you know Sally or fucking uh, John Quayque can just wake up one morning and say, "I want to start a fucking thing." They can't. I, mean, I don't, I don't want to monetize that. Everybody is not equipped to be an entrepreneur. Yes, that is very true. But sometimes you have to end up being a therapist of sorts. And yeah. although that person's journey may not be the entrepreneurial journey that they originally thought it was supposed to be, you as the publicist or the person that helps them with their brand sometimes can kind of show them and lead them in the right direction. Um, yeah. And it may be something that they never even thought of that you saw in them that, you know, could help them be the person that they were meant to be. They yeah, were not the, meant to the, start this t shirt yeah, line. That's the thing that I can have I can literally have one conversation with someone. I can just be like, this is like this is not it's not for you at all. But if someone said you have a shot, okay, I'll say this. Yeah, everyone can try. Yeah, I'm not trying to let the fucking Debbie down here. Everyone can try, right? Yeah, I'm like who like I'm trying my stuff. I'm not fucking I'm not rich or anything. I'm trying my dance up but I know I have it in me. Like I have it like I have it in me to stay up until four or five like i had that in me 
Everyone can't Shit, do that. I'm going to sleep like, right after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, hey, you be, you be, you be. I'm honest. sleeping. <clears throat> the thing is, like, I know, every, I know everyone. It's just math. Like, if everyone, think about it. Wouldn't everyone be uh, Jeff Bezos? Wouldn't everyone have a, a multi-million dollar company if it was just so fucking easy? Like, everyone can't do that. It's just not. It's just not a possibility. And so, I, I like, I don't want to help you. And I feel like a lot of people, you know, they, they want they want to start this thing because you know it's it's cool, it's fun. I get to, I get to ask all my business friends about you know questions and stuff. But it's like, like why like, why are you doing that? Like, like be a therapist, like you said. Like I'm not interested in you know entertaining like this phase of entrepreneurship you're in right now. Like I want to help you with the actual problem. Like you're 36 years old. Like you're not gonna be a fucking rapper, dude. Like why are you doing this? But like, let's get down to the actual problem. Like I want to actually help the person, not like monetize their like their their phase, their current phase they're going through right now. That's just how I'm looking at it. And tell, me I'm, tell me if I, and, tell me if I sound stupid or not. And no, it, it actually aligns with what I said. Sometimes people have to come to you with the vision that they currently have for you to help guide and direct them to who and what they are actually supposed to be. Yeah. That's smart. But here's the thing, like, when you ask me how did I start part of music, after I had that really life-changing moment, like, I was like 19, I was like 19 years old, like, I went home, and I was on the internet for like two weeks, and I was looking up music videos, how to do this, how to do that, I was doing it, like, for fucking two weeks, I didn't sleep, I converted to Uberman sleep, or at one point in my life, you know what Uberman sleep is, Q? No. O- a Uberman sleep pattern is when you sleep. For two hours, you work for four, then you sleep for two hours, then you work for four hours, then you sleep for two hours, then you work for four hours, and you keep, oh. and you fucking keep doing it. <laughs> I, oh. did that, I did that for quite a while. I was fucking crazy. And when I was 19, I put together this business plan, and I presented it to my friends, and, you know, they looked at it, and, you know, oh, they said, this is stupid. They fucking thought I had to go back. I had to change it. Like, I was actually putting in the fucking work. I, was, I wasn't, like, I don't know. I, I had too much passion to, like, I don't know, man. I can just tell when people just don't have it. Like I don't like I don't care if someone I don't care if a kid came up to me right now and said, Yo, bro, I'll give you a million dollars to help grow my brand. And for one second I can tell that guy doesn't have it in him. I don't want it. Yeah. This is that, that's I definitely I something that I look for in my client. You have yeah. to have that passion because when days get tough, um you're the you're only gonna, you're one not gonna fucking blame me. You're the only one that knows your vision and your vision can't yeah. be executed without your passion. I can do everything in my power to help you get there. However, yeah. you're the one driving the, sh- the the boat, the ship, the car, or whatever. Your passion yeah. is what's like, going to help like, us gonna, elevate to that next level. Like, it's not Q's fault that, you know, your shirt sucks. You know, it's not Q's oh, fault. Like, that you, if that you, you don't stop anything. talking about uh, this friend and your t-shirt, this t-shirt <laughs> I wasn't talking, was talking about him, but... um. Anyway, that's cold as fuck outside. Q, you're a great fucking guest, bro. You have a, I appreciate a great, sto- a great, I a great pre- story. I appreciate you, and, and I appreciate everybody that has been yeah. rocking Everyone with us on this live. Keep pushing and growing. Mark Zuckerberg has friends at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a crazy-ass story. And, um, yeah, crazy conversation. You have a crazy story. And um, hopefully, <clears throat> I'll get out. I'll get out of... Uh, Cleveland soon. I'm in the fucking terrible ass neighborhood. I'm really trying to go to New York. I have it in me. Like, I want to go to New York, but it's like a thousand dollars a second to breathe in fucking New York. So, like, that's kind of um, holding me back a little bit. But I want to get I want to get out my city too, man. So, I kind of I feel like I'm where you were at. And like, when you're in Cleveland, you want to go somewhere. And I kind of I feel like I'm in that spot. So, your story was extremely inspiration, inspirational. And Absolutely, and I appreciate you for bringing me on your platform. And sometime this week, we'll chat offline to talk about what you just Hell yeah. mentioned, and you know, just kind of help to map out a journey for you to be in a place that you feel productive and great, and all that good stuff. And I definitely don't want Instagram to end us because I know how they. Oh are. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so hey, yeah. thank you, Q, for being on. Um, how I, I, I was in the show with a, with a little. I guess we'll call it the, the conspiration. What is your number one advice for, um, for people watching the show? For people, you know, ele- elections tomorrow, the fucking world is in a crazy spot. Well, what, what is your number one advice for people right now? 
Well, we actually have a couple. So voting is over tomorrow. If you have not voted, you still have time. Take your ass out and vote. Yeah. This important. This election is very important. And on a personal level, always believe in yourself. Believe in your abilities. Um, believe that you can be any and everything you want to be. But it all starts with you. Um, and if you need any more inspiration, make sure you guys hit me up at <laughs> Quintessential <laughs> One, Quintessential Branding, The Quintessential Gentleman, Quinspiration, Quint Hunger Strikes, and BLK Lunch and Learn. Oh, and Live with Team Marie and Q. So just hit yeah, me up. Gotta check out everything, everything he got. And I'll have it in the description um, down below. Q, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. You may not go to sleep now. I, oh, I'm going to sleep. I'm, <laughs> I'm over it. I'll be this. up. All right, I'll appreciate up, you. Hey, man, have a great night, bro. You too. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's great to be back. I'm going to get off here because I don't want to um, fail on this. But uh, thank you for being here. I am out right, outside right now. It is 38 degrees. I'm a little crazy. But um, this is a great show coming back. Just like I said, man, you have to have it inside of you. Inside of you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to have it inside of you. Inside. No one else is going to push you. I'm not gonna push you. I'm not gonna fucking. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna text you like and and tell you that. Oh yeah, bro, you could do it. Like I'm not gonna do that. You have to have it in you. Simple as that. Because you know you built for this. And the thing is, I hope I didn't come on cynical when I was saying that. I don't like helping people with their startups. It's because like, I, I I I didn't do that. I don't believe in in that. And I can't do that if I didn't do it that way. Because that's not authentic. You have to have it in you. Like there was no one fucking texting me. There was no one encouraging me in 2017 when I literally had no platform, no nothing, no Kendrick. There was no Kendrick. There was no Heart of Music. There was no Viva Media Group. There was no Kendrick show. There was nothing. Literally nothing. I, I there wasn't no one helping me with that. Where were they at? There was no one. I had I had to get myself out of that. And I, I honestly don't think I you can't you can't teach that. I you can't coach that. You you can't fucking read a podcast about that. You can't go to school about that. You have it's either in you or it's not. You push yourself to go and say, Hell yeah. Otherwise you're relying on someone else for your success in a way. Exactly. You have to have it in you, man. I appreciate everyone that was on this live tonight. It's really great to be back. I'm now gonna debate if I want to continue this outside, because <laughs> it's cold as shit. But um, that's probably disgusting. So I thought, you know, it comes to my nose. But um, thank you for watching tonight. I'm going to go in the house where it's, where it's nice and warm. And uh, we will be back Wednesday. This is the best show on planet Earth. Thank you, guys. Oh, don't forget to vote tomorrow. Please, please, please vote. Super, super, super important. I'll leave on that. Uh, this election is going to be crazy. Please make sure you go vote. i vote tomorrow morning. Vote, 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 vote. Vote, vote, vote. Either you're a Republican, Democrat, if you're a fucking conservative, a liberal, if you're a goddamn centralist, if you don't know what the fuck you are, go on the internet right now, read the platinum plan, read Trump's fucking plan, make a goddamn decision, and just please fucking vote. Because you don't want to be that one person that's bitching about the government, but yet you don't fucking vote. Because then you're going to be a jackass. But that's it. We'll be back Wednesday night. Thank you, everyone that was uh, watching tonight.